Hey guys, Mark here and welcome to day three of our Advent of Code series where we're solving the challenges on the adventofcode.com website. So if we look at the challenge for day three, we can see that it's all about Santa delivering presents to various houses and Santa is getting sent instructions in which direction to go to move to the next house. So if he gets this up arrow, it means go north, down arrow go south, right arrow go east and west um, for left arrow. So fairly simple. And once again, we've got our own problem input, which has got loads and loads of these directions. And so the challenge is basically asking us to find out how many houses Santa visits. Now he does visit some houses more than once. And so what we need to do is to, as we go through this list of directions, keep a track of all of the houses that Santa visits so that we can count them. So how can we do that? Well, let's have a look at the solution I came up with in C Sharp. Now, what I decided to use was a method that we talked about for day one's challenge, and it's a method from the Morelink NuGet library called Scan. What it allows us to do is to go through our input sequence and thread an accumulator through it. And so in this case, the accumulator is an anonymous object which represents the position that Santa is at. So it starts off that he's at point zero, zero. And then for each character, C, in the input sequence, we work out the new position that he's got to. So if it's a right arrow, he goes X plus one, and Y says the same, and so on. And then, just for simplicity, I convert the position into a string separating X and Y by a comma. So let's just comment out these last two stages and see what we get with the first part of our link pipeline. As you can see, we've got an innumerable, innumerable sequence of all the positions that Santa's got to, which is excellent, it's what we want. Now, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit in my answer because I thought we were going to be asked find how many houses that Santa delivered more than one present to. And so I thought I was going to have to group by position and then count the ones where the group's count was more than one. So if you see what happens when we do group by, take a little while to run here, we see that there are various groups the house at zero, 00 got one present, the house at 10 got two, this house got five presents, and so on. But actually the question wasn't asking for anything that complicated. It just wanted to know how many unique houses were visited, so I just counted my groups in the end. So let's have a look at how I did the same problem in F sharp. Okay. I did it very slightly differently. First of all, I mapped each element in the input sequence into a vector of what direction Santa needs to move in. So if I comment these out, and I'm afraid my computer is still running F sharp very slowly for some reason, um, but we're going to get a sequence that turns each of these directions into a vector to go into. And there we get our answers. Now we need to pass them into the scan function. And as we said last time, F sharp does have its own scan method in the seek module. And so what we need to do is to pass in a starting position, which is at the end here, zero, zero. And with F sharp, using tuples is really easy. So that's what we're using here. And then we need to sum the vector to move onto the starting position. And that's very easily done with F sharp thanks to pattern matching. I can say that this function takes two tuples. The first one is x1 comma y1 and the second one is x2 comma y2 and it returns a tuple which has the x part summed and the y part summed. And so when we run that we're going to get a sequence of all the houses that Santa visited. Now we're in a position to find out how many presents were delivered to each house. And again, because I hadn't read the question correctly at first time, I thought I was going to have to do seek.countby and count by the ID, that is the element in the sequence, and find out how many presents were delivered to each house. But of course, we didn't need that. 
we just need to find how many distinct houses were visited and seek.distinct can do that. Now I don't need to do a two string before I do my distinct. C F sharp's um, tuple method will do a comparison and two instances of a tuple with one comma one will be considered to be the same. So I can just then do a seek.length to count how many distinct houses and this will give me exactly the same result as I got in C sharp. And I think this is perhaps a slightly nicer solution than the one we came up with in C sharp, which looks like this. So let's move on while this is still running and find out what part two of the puzzle was. There we go, it did get the same result. So part two actually makes this problem a little bit more complicated. Not only is Santa delivering presents, but Robo Santa is delivering presents and they're taking it in turns to follow one of the instructions. So the first instruction is for Santa, the next instruction is for Robo Santa, and so on. And we have to find out how many houses between them they visit. So let's go back to C sharp. And I do like, on the whole, to try and solve these types of problem in one uh, link expression. It's a bit of a challenge, um, quite a fun challenge, but sometimes you find it does get a little bit complicated and it's best to make your code a bit more readable. So here I've allowed myself to create a helper class and a helper method, but it is still solved in a single link expression. The helper class, I could have used tuples, but I just made a position class with an X and a Y property. And the helper method takes a direction a starting position and returns the new position. So if the direction is go right we return the starting position x plus 1 and the starting y. Right, so let's see how we use these helper methods in our link query. Well again I'm using a method from more link and this is the batch method. What the batch method does is it takes your um, link, your, your I enumerable sequence and it batches it up together into uh, arrays of however many items you specify. So this is going to give me first of all the first two elements, then the next two, and then the next two. And what that allows me to do is to turn my scan function into something that updates the positions of both Santa and Robo Santa. So I'm going to get I'm going to start off with Santa and Robo Santa at position zero zero. And for each element, I'm going to get the current positions of Santa and Robo Santa and two directions. And then I'm going to return an anonymous object that moves Santa the first direction um, from his current position and moves Robo Santa the second direction from his current position. And you'll see I'm using first and last here because C is actually an I enumerable and not an array. So I can't just index 0 and 1, unfortunately, in this case. I could have solved that with another select statement. Then I'm going to turn this sequence. Let's just have a look at this sequence in the current state it's in. So we get an enumerable sequence of two lots of position. Here's where center is and here's where robo center is. In the next, here's where Santa is and here's where Robo Santa is. I want to now flatten this list because we're interested in the unique houses that both of them visited together. And so select many. For each element in the original sequence, I return two elements, Santa and Robo Santa's position. So if we look at that, in fact, let's um, also include the next statement, which converts each position into a string, as we did originally. Now we just have all of the positions that they go to between themselves. And that means I can use the same technique that I used last time, group by and count. Really I should have used distinct and count because it doesn't matter how many times they visit. And that will tell me the total number of houses that Robo Center and Santa visit between themselves. Let's have a quick look at how I solved this in F sharp. Now in F sharp, 
I decided to take a slightly different approach. I made a few helper functions and that's something that um, when you're using a functional language like f -sharp, it really is handy how simple it is to make helper functions. So get vector turns a character from the original sequence into a tuple that represents the direction and I'm using f -sharp's match expression to do that. I've also made an add vector function which takes two tuples of ints and adds them together. And here's the original directions as a string. Then I've got my state object that I'm going to use to thread through the scan function. And the state object is going to have Santa's position, Robo Santa's position, and the index. And the reason I'm using index is so that I can tell whether this is a direction for Santa to go in or Robo Santa. And finally, I need the update method that I'm going to use in my call to the scan function. It takes the state and the next direction, and if the state's index um, is even, then that means Santa's moving. And if it's odd, it means Robo Santa's moving. So I map each of the uh, characters in the direction string into a vector and I scan through and that's going to get me all my positions. Let's just comment these out and see what we get. And so you can see here we get a sequence of our state objects with Santa's position, Robo Santa's position and um, the index in the initial sequence. And so then I do a map uh, operation where I just take Santa's position from the first one then Robo Santa's position from the next one, then Santa's, and so on, because there's no need to have double of every position. Not that it particularly matters in this case, because we're not counting how many houses they actually visit, just how many distinct houses they go to. Then we can do, as before, seek.distinct and seek.length, and that will get us to our final answer. Now, one thing I've not mentioned before is that on the... Um, advent of code website there's a link to a subreddit and this is a great place to go if you're a bit stuck on any of these advent of code problems I've tried not to look at anyone else's solutions before solving them for myself but often you find there are some really good suggestions and also you get to see people using different languages now one of the coolest things I found on here was somebody had done a visualization using d3.js of showing where Santa and RoboCenter go. So if I go here, here's the final result, but if I refresh the page, then you'll see that we get this very elegant animation showing the progress of where Santa and RoboCenter are going. And so I would encourage you, check out that subreddit and learn a bit from the way that other people are solving the same problems. And as usual, in the comments, let me know if there are any better ways that I could have solved the problem myself. Thanks for watching and hopefully you'll join me for day four.